In this tutorial, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get started with Scilab using matrices. So let's start with inputting matrices. So to input a matrix, we're going to call one A. So we define the name of the matrix as A equals. Then for all matrices in Scilab, you're going to use square brackets. And then we do say we want a two by two matrix with elements one, two, three, four. So you do one, a space gets you onto the next column. Then you've got a semicolon telling you you're on the next row, three, and then space, four. So we've now got the matrix one, two, three, four. We can also define a matrix B in the same way. So maybe make this one five, six, seven, eight. And so we've got two matrices that we can work with. And so let's look at doing matrix multiplication. So there's two ways to do it, depending on what you want to achieve. So the simplest way is to go A times B. And this does normal matrix multiplication as you would expect matrix multiplication to be done. However, sometimes you don't want to do matrix multiplication. Maybe you want to actually multiply each element by the corresponding element of the other matrix. So you want to do say one times five and two times six and three times seven and four times eight. So you're timesing each element of matrix A by each element of matrix B. And so the way the Scilab interprets this is to use dot time. So dot tells Scilab that you're working element by element. So we do A dot times B, and that does the multiplication by element. A really useful thing to be able to do is to be able to call specific parts of a matrix. So say you wanted to know what was in the 1, 1 position, you could call A11. Likewise, you could find out what's in the 2, 1 position and just simply putting the row, comma, and then the column number, that gives you the information you need. You can also find entire rows and entire columns. So for example, you can do this. So the semicolon, or rather the colon, says take every single thing. And in this case, what we've called is we're saying A, give me every single row in column one. If we reverse this, so we had a one first, and then we had the colon meaning all that's going to give us so row one and then everything it's saying everything in row one and so that's quite a useful way especially when we're doing things like eigenvalues and you can extract specific eigenvalues or you can extract eigenvectors so let's look at how we do eigenvalues and eigenvectors and there's two ways that you can go about this the first way is to just simply call spec of a and that gives us the eigenvalues of A. Doesn't give the eigenvectors. So what we need to do is we need to give it some additional inputs. So we can go evec. So evec is eigenvectors. So this keeps track of what's what. And then eval. You don't have to say evec and eval. You can call them A, B, X, Y, whatever you like. I tend to use this so I know which is which. It can be confusing if you're not paying attention. And then spec, I need to make sure I get the S, spec of A, we call that and we get the eigenvalues on the diagonal. And you can see that these are the same as above. And then the eigenvectors are these two with each eigenvector being the columns. And so if you wanted to extract one eigenvector, you would do it as so. So you would have the colon there and then one, and that's giving us one of the eigenvectors. The next thing I'm going to show you how to do is inverses and transposes. So very simply, INV and then call the matrix, and that gives you the inverse of A. And if you want to do a transpose, you simply have your matrix, and then after the matrix, you put an apostrophe and that will switch the rows and the columns around, giving you the transpose. Determinants are similarly simple, just debt and then your matrix, and that gives you the determinant. So a lot of these functions are, are very simple to work with. Your more advanced linear algebra functions are also quite easy to work with. You just have to know their specifics. So say we wanted to do an LU factorization, so we can have LU, and then we need a comma to separate that. And then say we've got rather call this LA and UA, so we're working with matrix A, and then we want LU, and then we call matrix A. Remember, you must use lowercase at this point here for the function name, 
calling a specific function. You can put whatever you like in, in these bits. I just like to write things that make sense about what's what. You've got similarly QR decomposition. So we could have say QA comma RA, and then we call the QR function with the argument of matrix A, and that gives us the QR decomposition. And the last thing you can do is you can do the singular value decomposition. So we need our two left and right matrices. We need the singular value matrix and then our other orthogonal matrix. And then we're going to call SVD, make sure it's lowercase of matrix A, press enter. And that gives us our three matrices. So you've got the singular values on that diagonal and you've got the other two matrices in the decomposition. So hopefully this tutorial has been very helpful to you and you're now confident and can see all of the different functions and wonderful things that Scilab can do with linear algebra and matrices. So thank you very much for watching.